What's going on, family? Welcome to the Family Roundtable podcast, where we talk about everything family, business, and entrepreneurship. Of course, we are here and the amazing Invest Fest filming another episode, giving you a lot of value. And today, of course, is no other. We have somebody who will teach you a lot about protecting protecting your assets and protecting yourself, okay? She's here, she's actually right next to us, killing the game, okay? We are out here in InvestFest, really making sure people know the importance of protecting not only yourself, but your assets. And today, I wanna go ahead, and you know what? It's the first time I did this, but this is such an amazing treat because she'll be, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna learn something. So I want you to go ahead and introduce yourself. It's the first time I did that. So I wanna make sure they know how special this conversation is. Can you introduce yourself, what you do, who you are? Yeah, my name is India Wiley. I'm a trust-based estate planning attorney, licensed in Georgia as well as Texas. I've been practicing law since 2019. And just similar to you, just on a mission to educate and empower our community about the importance of having their estate plan in place. But more importantly, just not just any estate plan, right? Talking about trust, how to protect assets, how to make sure we're with legacy down to the next generation, to, to bridge that wealth gap in our community and also just uh, for, the, for the safeguarding of assets that our ancestors have accumulated, that we've accumulated over time for the little ones like this. For sure. You know, to, to be able to um, inherit wealth without the trauma and drama. Exactly. <laughs> and we know that we do not need that trauma or the trauma. I always believe that um, trauma can be generational. Agreed. Right? So, like, how do you feel about generational trauma as a whole, especially when it comes to trust and estate planning? Yeah. Well, I think about uh, generational trauma is just the way you live, right? So, um, the life you live is the legacy you leave. Right. So, if your life is unorganized, if your life is full of drama, if it's full of trauma, that's going to be the legacy you leave, and that's what your children and your children's children are going to inherit. So it has to start somewhere. Somebody has to break that cycle. Right. Somebody has to start the new trend. Somebody has to shift the mindset. It's gotta be us, right? By doing that, we set them up to have right. a different mindset. They grow up in a different environment. They don't grow up in a trauma-filled environment, right? Right, right, and that's right. the importance. Changing it here with us, and then they're gonna be eons beyond us, right? For sure, that's for the sure. Goal. A thousand percent. A thousand percent. So for the people, the audience that's out there, of course, on this podcast, we talk a lot about trust, but I want to get it from your point of view. I always want to know, because we got some, we got generational wealth right here with we you. We do, yes. You know what I'm saying? So. Sir says born financially free. I see. I see. What's the bottom set? Ask Attorney Ali. That's me. Oh, look. <laughs> I like, I'm, we are big on marketing and branding, okay? <laughs> but I want to ask you, like, how, how has it been... Um, I always like to ask parents this. Let me just, let me pull back a little bit. I just asked one of my friends this earlier. And I, and I want to ask from a woman's point of view, because I always ask from a man's point of view. Like, how is it having another generation, having a, having a, a, a an unborn or having a child with you? Like, has it hit you yet? Has it, you know, does it come and go? Yeah. Does it, has it already hit? And you're like, oh, dang, I got somebody. Like, yeah. not in a bad way, but like right. in a way of like, I have another life that I have to take care of and yeah. treasure. How is, how is that, Phil? <laughs> I would say it comes and goes. Okay. I mean, he's obviously always here. Facts. Uh, but, I, you know, you just wake up with a purpose. Mm. You know, it's your, I'm, I'm reminded every morning of why I do what I do. Mm. You know, I have to leave a legacy too. Right, right, and right. what type of legacy do I want to leave? Not only for him, but maybe future children are mine, right. but also his children. Yeah. And so I'm constantly reminded when I see him, if I get tired or, you know, I don't feel like doing this today. Right. Okay, well, you know, I have to think about, well, what legacy do I want to leave? And That's he's a constant saying. reminder of that. It's a beautiful reminder. And so, I mean, it gets difficult juggling, you know, entrepreneurship, being a wife, being a mom. Um, but that's what it's all about. We're here to work. Sure. <laughs> thousand percent. You're here working at InvestFest. He is right there. Right here with me. That man, you want to know what's crazy? Um, I always say this to people, but I feel like it's important because he's young now. Yeah. Um, my mom had us starting entrepreneurship at the age of five. Wow. Uh, we started 
uh, public speaking at 8 and cold calling at 11. Nice. Right? And I feel like because he's here early and you're in, you're you're entrusted in with a lot of things early on that he'll be in this exact same situation if not better. Right. Cuz it's going to be a different generation, That's it's going to be a goal. lot more access. Yeah. Right? And a lot more opportunities that he'll know the importance of what you did. He may not understand, you know, as he's growing up cuz right. I know I did. Let's right. be real. You know, I'm just thinking it's all you being naggy, uh, right? Right? Yeah. Uh, you're being a mother, you know. <laughs> right. But like he'll know when he hits a certain age like, "Oh, I'm glad that she put me in this position." Exactly. You get what I'm saying? Because now I know more things than an average person. That's true. Do you know what I'm saying? So like how how is that how do you feel that he will act at the age of like 21, 25 in that area? Do you think that cuz in a trust you got rules. Exactly. Right? So like like what what does that look like for him at that age? Well, he better act right or he going to get written out of the trust. Uh but no, I mean, the goal is obviously, like you said, to expose them at, a, at an early age and, and teach them the things that we weren't taught, right? Right. Like we always say, dang, if I knew, you know, what I know now at 15, I would be way, you know, well beyond where I'm at right now. And so it's like imparting that information and knowledge on, the, on them at, at a young age. So when they're, you know, in high school or like you said, being an entrepreneur at the age of five, right. you know, understanding the importance of owning your own and um, what that means as a black young man you know? right for sure those things are very important I, and i just hope for him that you know one day he might want to take over the law firm you know yeah or that he he finds his own way but that he's just a stand-up guy that he's successful that he's a kind person for sure and that you know my legacy lives on even beyond just the money and all those things this, this tradition what i believe in what i stand for uh, what his father stands for you know the meaning behind our name is so important as well and so you know, we're just teaching him that at a young age, and you know, hopefully it sticks and hopefully he gets it. But if he doesn't, you're gonna get written out the truck, so okay? <laughs> you will be written out. So you Not written right. out. I'm done. He's like, what is, what is out me? Right. Like we didn't even get to trust. What is out me? <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So let me ask you this: for the people who aren't aware of what trust is, can you explain to them what a trust is? Right. So a trust is an estate planning tool, right? It's it's actually like a contract. And so it's always three parties involved. You have the trustor, the person who creates the trust, the trustee, the person who manages the assets in the trust, and you have yep. the beneficiary, yep. the person who benefits um, from the assets. And so a trust is a private document right. it's between a family, right? It avoids probate court, private document is not public like a will. Correct. It avoids probate court because you put assets in the name of the trust while you are alive. Right. Right. And that's very important and very key. A lot of people don't realize that all wills go through probate. Thousand percent. And a lot of people don't understand that probate process, like what it's like going through it. I know personally what it's like going through it and professionally. It's not fun. Correct. And so at the end of the day, a trust is a legal document. It is like a contract. And it, it always has a piece of those three parties involved. It's a, it's a legal tool where you transfer assets during your life and you leave instructions of how those assets are to be managed and maintained and distributed at your passing. Nice, nice, nice. That was a very clean cut definition right there. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> I was like, dang, I understood every word that she just said. <laughs> So like estate planning, I know that a lot of people get confused between a trust and estate planning. Can you yeah. explain the difference between the two? So it's not a big difference. So trust is just a part of estate planning, but it's not the end all be all. Estate planning consists of a, of a lot of things, right? Life insurance, right? You know, financial power of attorneys, medical power of attorneys. Um, you know, make sure you have your business structures, in, business structures in place. Right. Business succession planning in place. For if sure. You have a business, how's it going to continue after you pass away? Right? right, so all that encompasses your estate plan. Mm. So you have trusts, wills, financial power attorneys, medical power attorneys, healthcare directives, HIPAAs, you know, business structure, make sure all that's in place. If you have an LLC, a family limited partnership, yep. estate planning is literally a plan for your stuff and whatever your stuff is, right? Right. And it's not. It's not something that you just think about when about death. No, it's about organizing everything right, right now while you are alive. Thousand percent. And that's the biggest misconception. Oh, state planning is only about death. No, it's not. You do that now. It's a living, breathing process, a living, breathing document while you are alive, and it evolves with you. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So I want to ask a very, very 
complicated but simple question. Okay. Okay? Everybody talks about a revocable and an irrevocable trust, yep. which one to get, yep. and how I can benefit from it, or can I change it, blah, 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 right. blah. Now, I have my point of view, yep. but I would like to know your point of view. Which trust should a person have now? What should a person have now? Now, I'm going to give you a lawyer answer. It depends. I right? know. So anytime any potential client calls me, we take them through their, you know, the consultation and ask more, you know, questions about them personally. What is your family dynamics? What assets do you have? Right? What are your goals? Most, for most people, most average day-to-day -day people, which most of us are, the revocable trust is fine. Right. That's the one you can change. Correct. Right? Most people don't need the irrevocable trust because it doesn't make sense to relinquish the control over an asset that you actually need to have control over. For sure. Right? And they don't understand that having the revocable trust, the, the strategic reason of doing that, and why a lot of people that you see on social media talking about it is because they're trying to do income shifting, they want to mitigate their taxes, or they want to prevent themselves from being, you know, um, attacked by their creditors. Right. And so the irrevocable trust gives asset protection while you are alive. A revocable trust doesn't do that, but a revocable trust will allow you to avoid probate court. You said a revocable. Revocable. They Just both allow sure. you to avoid probate court. Right, right, right. But the revocable trust is more or less to avoid probate court, make sure at my death the assets are then protected from my beneficiaries' creditors, but it doesn't protect your assets from your creditors while you are alive. That's what percent but for the average day-to-day -day person, it's like, well, why do you need asset protection? Nobody's going to sue you. Why do you need to shift, shift income? You're not in any tax implications where you got to worry about tax strategies like that. Right. You know, so I think it's the common misconception is a lot of people are online that are talking about trust. They're not specifying which trust they're talking about. But then they're also just talking about, well, yeah, it makes sense for somebody who's a multimillionaire to maybe have an irrevocable trust. Right. But, you know, somebody that's just an average person, you know, not to them because, you know, most of America's middle class. Thousand percent. Most middle class I thought class most people, were, were lower class nowadays. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Now lower it's since 2020. Don't need an irrevocable, but they need the revocable trust. That's that's the one that makes the most sense for their goals and their actual needs. Okay, so I want to I wanna challenge that for a second. Yep. Right? I'm just... You know, challenge you. Yep. And, and not even really a challenge, but I'm, it's really more like a question. Yep. I'm not even going to say it's a challenge. It's more like a question. Okay. So, I've heard through the grapevine that with the irrevocable trust, you can still have control, as you as you know, right? By putting an entity as the grantor okay. or the entity as the trustee, whichever okay. one, and, and you be either the grantor or the trustee. Right. What are your thoughts on that? Can you do that? Yeah, you can do that. I've heard that too. I've seen it done. Um, I've, I've, yeah, that's what, I, that's what I've seen it done myself yeah, yeah. too. It can be done. I think it's just what people need to think about is that how much money you trying to spend. <laughs> right? Okay, you want that type of trust? We can do it. You're going to spend a pretty penny. Right? And is it really necessary? That's the thing that boils down to. Is it necessary for what you're trying to accomplish? Now, if it's like, I don't care if it's not necessary, this is what I want, we can make it happen. But we're going to charge you for it, too. Mm -hmm. So it can definitely answer your question. And what are you doing? You're all over the place. <laughs> He's like, I'm trying to be financially free. I know, right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, like, okay, so I know you said that it costs a pretty penny to do those type of things, the situations of having the LLC and yourself being right. having access. So why does it cost so much to get that situated? I think it costs you, more. You know what? He might as well do his own thing. You I know, know what right? I'm saying? So, yeah. It costs more because it's more work. Right. Right? It's more work. So, more pieces are added. Generally speaking, if you're wanting to do an LLC and you wanted to do that type of trust, it's, because, it's for a reason. You're probably, wanting, you're probably also wanting to be anonymous. You're probably Thousand percent. also wanting, wanting some, like you said, some anonymity, and that costs more money. Right? right. Some states don't do the asset protection trust. Like Georgia 100%. doesn't recognize the domestic no, asset protection trust. They don't. So now we're looking at potentially going to Nevada. Or Wyoming or, or Delaware. Or Wyoming, or exactly. Yeah. So we're structuring it in a different state. So yeah. We had to do the same thing. Making all those pieces move, that's gonna cost more money.
thousand percent. You want to be And anonymous. it does cost more in Wyoming. Exactly. It costs at least triple. Yeah. It now costs we start, more. We start at twenty five thousand dollars. A thousand percent. A thousand percent. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, pull it closer to you. Yep. So, I have two questions for you, and I can go all day. This this conversation, trust is a is a very important conversation. Okay, and people need to know it. Yeah, agree. Corporate structuring. If I haven't had that question so many times since I've been here, yeah. on how to structure your business, yeah. what is your philosophy on structuring, on corporate structuring? I'm gonna give you the lawyer answer again. It depends. Mm. Okay, let me give you an example. Yeah. Let me give you an example, because it, it is a depends answer. And in my head, I'm having an idea of assets, so I'm gonna explain it to you. Okay. Let's say you have three, let's say you have three LLCs. Okay. You have four real estate LLCs, like LLCs, but have property addresses right. and everything in them. And then you have one sole proprietor. What would you do with those things? Right. I think it all, it, it just goes back, what's the objective, right? So ultimately, obviously having an LLC provides that, that liability protection, which is very important. Right. So you want to have that. But then you need to think about, and we tell anybody we talk to, when they're talking about estate planning or just business structure, and estate planning includes all of that too, you want to make sure you have an estate planning attorney, your CPA tax specialist, right. and financial advisor. Because when we're talking about LLCs, you want to make sure you're being taxed a certain way. Correct. So are you going to be taxed as an escort, right? Or do right. you need to change and actually be escort status, period? So it always just depends on what's the ultimate goal. What are you trying to accomplish? I'll give you a goal. Just so people on a podcast can really have a, a, yeah. a tactical, tactful way of yeah. thinking, right? So I'm going to make this simpler. So you have three LLCs, two real estates, that's it. Yep. Three, so five total. Um, their goal is to be anonymous, okay. and their goal is to have a trust, but they don't know which trust to have. Gotcha. Well, if they want to be anonymous, right, having a revocable trust is not going to do that. Right now, they can do an you know anonymous LLC, but why would you put that in a revocable trust? I don't think exactly. That makes, sense, that makes right? no sense. Right, right, right. So what I would probably tell them is, if they want an anonymity, they're gonna have to do an LLC that's not in. That's probably gonna have to be Wyoming, Delaware, yeah, for sure. Nevada, like we talked about. As the and holding company. Holding company. Got gotcha. sure. So I mean, the, the most protection you're gonna get, having obviously get insurance on the properties. Yes. Get an LLC. Correct. Right. Yep. Get a domestic asset protection trust, but the LLC, those LLCs are owned by the holding company. Correct. The holding company is owned by the asset protection trust. That's going to give you all the layers of protection you need, yep. but then you can be anonymous. So that's what I would suggest for them and advise. So I've heard this, I've heard this come around and run around several times, right? Yep. Asset protection trust yep. or a trust. People use those two words. What is the difference between just a trust and an asset protection trust? Well, when you just say trust, you're not specifying whether it's revocable or irrevocable. Okay. And that's the basic structure, right? The basic two structures of trust is irrevocable or revocable. Correct. Now, we can list off how many different types of trust there are, but at right. the end of the day, it's either going to be revocable or irrevocable. Right. When you call it an asset protection trust, that's an irrevocable trust. That's just another name for it. Okay. Because okay. it actually, for, I actually didn't know protection that. for your assets. I didn't know that. I just thought... Like if you call it, I guess a, I did know that. If you call it trust, say, a land trust, that. right? Like people heard of a land trust. All that trust does is own land. Right, all right, right. Real property. Correct. But Correct. it's called a land trust, but that's it. Or a charitable trust. All it does is do charity. Oh, charity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. but at the end of the day, is it revocable or irrevocable? I don't know why. I think when I what's crazy is I say asset protection trust, knowing the meaning of it, but I don't think I ever thought of it like that's another word for it. Yeah. But I did know that that's what it meant. I don't know, my mind just didn't connect it for some reason. But yeah, revocable trust is not an asset protection trust. And that is important to state. Yeah. Because a lot of people, I've, I have had conversations here yeah. saying, yo, I have an asset protection trust. Okay, like what? But I, I'm not, but I want to, but I'm not anonymous. I'm like, okay, well, yeah. are you sure you have an asset protection trust then? Right. Like, and I, and I only have one LLC. Right. Well, and you it, can have an asset protection trust and it not be anonymous. 
So the anonymity comes when you you make it anonymous by having those extra layers, right? Well, they didn't have those layers. Right, they didn't have the layers, but you can still have asset protection trust. But there are a lot of people who have revocable trust and they think it's an asset protection trust. Right. It's not. Right, 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 yeah. right, right. So my other question, uh -huh. and this is a personal question. Okay. I have wanted this question asked for answered for so long. And I believe I know the answer to it, okay. but I want to get a second confirmation from an attorney. Okay. okay? This, is a, this is a selfish question. <laughs> when it comes to trust, yep. and this is the structuring of it, right? Do certain trusts have, its, have another trust as a beneficiary? Like, yes, so, can, so, because yeah. I, because I was, my research, I've read like every, I think I've read, I've read every, like asset protection or trust book, okay. not asset protection, but like trust book that it, passed into the buck, you know, express trust. You know, there's other books that's out there that I can't remember right now. I got like 14 books. Got you. But there's not a lot of corporate structuring trusts out here, like books wise. Got you. Like those are things you actually have to either go to an attorney for right. or pay somebody to learn the information. But I actually want to know, like, is there a structure on, because I know you're supposed to layer a trust or yeah. layer trust on top of each other but like is there a certain well, you, structure I mean, you can or you can't it, it's going it, it's going to go back to what is this particular client's needs what are their goals right mm -hmm. so going back to just the average every day-to-day -day person they don't need all that okay right now can you have a revocable trust and name another trust the beneficiary of that revocable trust yeah you can mm -hmm. right but if somebody's coming to you and they have a multi-million dollar business, they have all these assets, they have these this family that they want to take care of, and they have these layered instructions, then yeah, we're going to be talking about different types of strategies and right. methods um, and strategic measures to make sure that their goals and objectives are met. This is not one size fits all. Correct, all, correct, right? correct, correct. Everybody's going to be different, come with different circumstances. And so that's why it's important when you're talking about trust that you have those subject matter experts that you're talking to Facts. that can help you um, structure it for you the right way. You know what I mean? Got you. So I had a friend, before we close out, I want to ask this. I had a friend, she has a ministry, a family, and a private trust. Okay. Right? Her goal, of course, is to be anonymous, separate herself from the state, you know, those type of goals. Um, but I was always curious on how she structured them. Yeah. Right, her goal is to be anonymous at the end of the day. She has assets, she has real estate, she has LLCs, yeah. holding companies, all that. But I'm always curious on how those three things are there. Do you think they're stacked on top of each other or would it be staggered out? Because right. I've seen people do it that way and I know the goals are different, but in her case, her goal is to be anonymous, her goal is to layer. Yeah. So I'm curious on your, on your point of view, like how, how, would, how would you think about that? Like what would right. you do? So a couple things. Like when you add in those layers, that's layers of protection. Correct. So if somebody wanted to sue you, they would have to go through those hoops to try to get to you personally. Correct. Right? Now nothing is a hundred percent bulletproof. Like yeah, it's not a thousand percent. Like yeah. if somebody really wants to get to you, there's always wanna, loopholes. It's always loopholes, right? For sure. Generally speaking, you add all those layers because what person is gonna want to pay an attorney to go through all those layers to get to you? Right. They're going to have to come out of a lot of money. Generally, if they're suing you, they're going to probably have to pay the same amount they're suing you for to even get to you, which doesn't make financial sense. Correct. That's why you add all, all those layers. So whether you go layered up or you go this way, it really, I won't say it doesn't matter. It just depends, again, what your goals are. If I want to be anonymous, I can go about it this way. But if I want that asset protection, those extra layers of protection, then I add on top of each other. I have the LLC. I put the LLCs in the holding company. I put the holding company asset protection trust. You right. want to get real funky, okay? Maybe I need a foreign asset, a right, foreign right, right, trust. Right, 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 right. So if people want to come get me, they got to go abroad. Go abroad, right? yeah, yeah. So most people are not going to do all that. Thousand percent. I, I just did that. Gotcha. I feel so good getting a foreign trust, not because it's foreign, yeah, right, but because a lot of people. Like you said, you just said it. Like a lot of people aren't willing to go across. Is this totally different laws in those countries? Totally different laws. And they're not willing to do that. I mean, why? It's like, okay, so I'm gonna have to go through all these hoops to get to it. Might not be successful. I would have expended all this money trying to go after something 
it's just, it's a lose lose. Most people are not gonna do it. That's why anybody that does that type of protection, they do it for that reason. A thousand percent. Yep. A thousand percent. So you mentioned before that it depends on goals. Yes. Right? And this this is this is what I really want to tap into real quick, because I feel like this is extremely important on goal setting when it comes to putting a trust together. You said you can either go wide or you can go narrow, like layering wise. If you were to go wide, what do you and in, in a broad sense, yeah. what would be their goal? And if they were to and you because you already just mentioned the layer, like if they were to go broad, what would be their goal at the end of the day? Like in a broad sense. So the people that I have spoken to, when they're actually going this way, is they're just uh, trying to acquire different assets, mm -hmm. right? They haven't really been trying to seek protection per se. It's like, okay, I got this asset, I got this business, I got this over here, I'm investing here. And they're really just trying to find a place to house everything. Right. Or they've housed everything in a trust, but they haven't added the layers of protection. So it's really, they're just, they're getting the pieces together. Right. And then they're coming to us to actually put it all into one place. Got you. So like a holding company, I mean, it's a trust, but like that one. Yeah, so that's how it's, it's, it's more like, okay, I have, a, I have a house, but I have a business. And then I have these rental properties over here. Right. I have an investment, like, you know, stocks and bonds here. Right. I have retirement over here. So it's different assets, asset right. classes, and they're here, 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 across. Right. It's like we need to put them in all in one place, in the trust, right? Right. But then that's going across the board. For sure. Versus everything's in one place, and I'm adding layers of protection on top of it. Thousand percent, thousand yeah. percent. Oh, this is good. Yeah. You answered my question. This is good. Because I always get that question of should I go broad or should I go, should I layer? I mean, it just depends. And, I, again, it and depends that's what on... I say. But I but and and you know the question I don't ask is like what is your goal? What are you going? I don't I don't ask that question enough. I don't yeah. ask it enough when they ask that question. Yeah. Because I think I go more into the, you know. You have two options. Yeah. But I don't really ask them like, okay, what's your goal? So that maybe I can guide you to which exactly. option. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm always like, because I'm not an attorney, so I don't want to give financial advice. Yeah. Right? So I always say you can do this or this. Yeah. And you kind of pick which one you want to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because if I give financial advice, then they're going to view me as an attorney, right. and then I can get sued, and right. then I, uh, I ain't got time for that. Understood. You know what Understood. I'm saying? But I do still think that the goal at the end of the day is a good question to ask, and I do think that's a good thing to do. I mean, because we all have them. I mean, some people right. aren't, aren't clear. Mm -hmm. I don't know what my goals is. You need to sit down and think about it. Facts. Right? Thousand percent. Once they know what their goals are or what their goal is, that helps them think about more about what is it I need. Exactly. So this is my goal to get here. How do I get there? What are the steps? Now let's talk about what plan makes the most sense for you. Right. So they're saying they want to build a strong legacy for their family, right? Right. And that's their goal. Right. Like, how would that work? That's... Is that a little bit too broad? That's very broad. So, okay. I mean, the next question will be, okay, cool. That's everybody's goal, generally speaking. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, but then the question is, well, what are your family dynamics right now? Who are the players in the family? Are you married? You have minor children. Right. You have adult children. Are your parents still living? What assets do you have that you're trying to pass to them? Okay, we asked those questions. Good. Right. We get good at them. Okay. Right. What instructions, a, we, we what are the instructions? Person. What instructions are you going to leave for the asset to tell them what to do with it? Once they go through that, it's like, okay, now let's talk about what tool, what estate plan do we need to put in place for you? You might not even need a trust, right? Based on your family dynamics, based on what your assets are, you might not even need it. But I would never know never, that. I would never, I've never heard somebody say that. You, you might not need, not need a trust, you might not depending need on your family dynamics. Family dynamics and what your assets are. Or oh again, yeah, because you may not ha you may not have enough to need a trust. Is that what you're saying? You may not necessarily have, because going back, what are, what's the goal? If the goal is simply to avoid probate court and all you want is the revocable trust, but let's say you don't have a house, all you have is life insurance, that avoids probate court anyway. Right. Now the, then, the question would be: Well, do you want your life insurance proceeds to be? you know, portioned out a certain way or all a lump sum payment. That's right. been the question. Right. So again, it goes back to family dynamics because if you're an older person with adult children that you trust to get the money to do the right thing, then you might not need a trust. You see what I'm saying? It always That's goes good. back to That's what are good. your goals? Who are the players? What is your stuff? 
That's good. And then we can guide you about what makes the most sense. That makes that makes a lot. Yeah. Of, that makes total sense. That yeah. makes total sense. Yeah. This is why she the plug. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but you know we it's, all trust over everything. Right. But. You see what I'm saying? Like that's important. So I want the people to know, like, how can they find you? Right. What can they do to get to know you a little bit more, build for that sure. know, like, trust factor? Uh, sure, for sure. Again, my name is Attorney India Wiley. I'm licensed to practice law in Georgia as well as Texas. I've been practicing law since 2014, and I've been having my own law firm since 2019. You can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Ask Attorney Ali. ASK Attorney Ali A L I on TikTok and Instagram. Also, if you just want to send a text or call, the number is 770-580-1122. Look, y'all. I think this is the first trust person we had on here. So y'all, and she the attorney. Y'all better tap in. I'm telling you, <laughs> if you don't have a trust and you feel like you have questions or you need it, think of this as a personal referral. You know what I'm saying? Tap in. Make sure you get straight. You know what I'm saying? She gave some very valuable information, and I hope that we gave you some information that will be able to benefit you and maybe answer some of the questions that you may have thought of. Because these, I'm asking, all I'm asking is frequently asked questions, y'all. And these are questions that most people do not answer, not even on a video. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? So I want you all to tap in. Appreciate y'all. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe. Leave them a review at the bottom. And I will see you all in the next episode. Peace out.